Hello and welcome back once again. So today we are going to talk about something very different and that's why are we so scared to try out something new in our life. So if you have ever heard that everyone gives you the advice that oh you should move out of your comfort zone try something different and yet all of us are really hesitant and a little bit scared of trying something new. So today we'll decipher why are we scared and what we can do to ensure that we can take that leap of faith. So one of my favorite quotes is, um, I think I read it in Pinterest and it says a ship is meant to be safe in harbor, but that's not why a ship is built. So for all of us, unless we take the next step, we really don't know what our potential is and uh, whether we'll be successful at it. So for someone like me, I genuinely believe that we have unlimited potential and we are the limits that we put on ourselves and the decisions we are hesitant to take. So. If you really want to do something, you have to get out of the zone and know that this is something that we can completely get it done and in good faith and in with a very positive mind. So why are we scared? I read about this really long ago and it's a book by Seth Godin and I think he talks about the lizard brain. So the lizard brain is nothing but the rewiring of our system where we are afraid to go out of our habits and something which is something we are not comfortable with or we assess them as in our brain assesses it as something new for us and the job of a brain is to keep us safe which means if the brain thinks you're doing something that can lead you to an uncomfortable position the brain will try you to convince that you know don't go for it stay at home stay in your couch don't go and start driving don't do things that you are not good at why risk when you can sit on the couch with a bag of potato chips and enjoy life? There are multiple examples you can think of and you can see all around you that people are so afraid of taking the risk and it's just the way your brain um, wires you and tells you continuously that don't do this and don't do that and you're not meant to do this and that's why we don't take the risk. So if you're somebody who has always been hesitant of doing something new and trying out something new don't worry, it's not your fault. It's probably you're listening way too much to your brain. And that is why we come up with the term called risk takers. People who will ignore what the brain says and say, I'm going to still go and try it. And then let's see what happens. So that's what we are going to talk about. Another very interesting quote I recently read is that everybody thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks about changing themselves. And I think when you question how you're thinking and um, the decisions you're making, you clearly get a very important trend that you can actually use to analyze and deep dive into yourself and see what you can do to get yourself out of that habit, right? So um, here are five things that we will talk about which will clearly tell us how to get yourself out of that lizard brain syndrome and what you can do to make sure that you are doing what you really want to do. Point number one is do your research. And the reason I think it's the most important of all is sometimes we just make decisions based on our fears, based on, oh, I know this is not going to work out without actually knowing that, hey, you do have a chance of making it work. So, for example, if your dream is to really go for the university of your dreams and this is what you want to do and the first thing you think of it is, what if I don't qualify? What if this is no? What if the price is very high? What if I can't live alone? So there are multiple things you keep on thinking and yet we don't do the research. So even if you're scared, I think the idea would be get the research done first. So you can look at the university website. You can see if there are student groups that you can contact and find out more about the courses you're planning to take or the living conditions, the expenses. Look for scholarships. There are chances there is a scholarship available and when you work out every single piece of it so you break down a big goal into smaller chunks to bring in more clarity it is very easy for you then put two plus two together and then see that oh what i thought was completely unachievable it's something that i can work towards and that's what you have to do to fool your brain you always don't need to reinvent the cycle and this has been my latest theme right now because let's say you want to start a blog and you're like oh so do i go for wordpress do i buy a domain name do i try blogger there are multiple options available right now in the market right so instead of trying to trying and going through all the steps and then being scared and saying 
let's try it next month and then the month never comes the easier option is to find a blog that you read every day and the blog that you love and then see what they do and how many um, side visitors they have the content they create the style they have and if that is something which is very very important to you just replicate the style to start with um, get the blog going see what you want to work around and then once you're into that zone and you're posting a blog or you're doing things the way you want it to be done then you can reinvent your style and say this is what I want to specialize in or this is my niche before that even before you go for step one don't just say I can't do it or you are so overwhelmed with so much research that you think this is just not my cup of tea the other important thing is you can always test A versus B so let's say you're very convinced that this is going to work for me but then at the same time you also want to try something else so test your audience test what you want to go for and then you know go ahead and decide which one you would like to actually um, go for so what do I mean by test A versus B so for example let's say um, you want to try out a new process do you think in my workplace this is the process that has been working so well for me but you know what I want to disrupt the process and I want to try something else so what you can do is in one cycle you can try whatever you think is working for you right now look at the data look how you feel look at your dynamics or team dynamics and then in the second cycle you can try something different and the end of the day the data or the analysis is always qualitative and quantitative together to ensure you can sustain it over a period of time so if you're somebody who will only look at data and you think that okay so this is working for me but I don't feel great doing it which means you might not be able to sustain it for a longer period of time so yes trend is important data is important but at the same time being true to yourself is equally important so look what works for you test your thought process and then go for it all right number four take calculative risk which means you should put in the background research and work before you jump into something so let's say you want to start a business don't just quit your job and say I know it's going to work and let me just put down my papers and then from tomorrow I'm a business owner Hell no, because it just might not work. And then you might not be in a position to go back and ask for the same job, right? So while risk taking is a positive attitude, I think taking calculative risks makes you look much more wiser. So um, again, do your research, figure out what you want to do, ensure you're not reinventing the cycle over and over again, and then take calculative risks. Everything sounds good, but at the end of the day, you have to get it implemented which means we, we are coming to point number five try everything in small increments don't jump and try a big bang theory so um, don't just say I'm going to do this and then I'm going to drop everything else and that's what I'm going to do instead break down your goals or dreams into small implementable action items and then try them put a timeline or a deadline and say I'm going to try this for the next 10 days or I'm going to try and see if this method is working for the next two months and see what I get out of it the more you try in incremental way you don't put a lot of pressure on yourself you also again want to sustain that um, ambition you want to sustain that growth mindset you also want to be calm because you don't want to be overwhelmed and worried and nervous and give up at the end of the day so try in small increments note down the results see what you're doing maybe try writing a journal and then you know go ahead and decide whether this is something that is meant for you if you're somebody who is really trying to get something done and we still have a few months of 2018 remaining um, I think sit down and do a goal setting for yourself and I do have a free um, printable version that is downloadable from my site I will keep the link in the description box below so if these are the vid kind of videos you really enjoy please let me know and um, thank you once again for watching and subscribing it means a lot to me